right here in this one little area, we have four different mayflies. Mayflies are one of the more unique and interesting insects that we find in an aquatic, in any of the streams that you might visit. Uh, someone once said that mayflies were the were invented for fly fishermen, and they have give us more opportunities to imitate different stages of this insect throughout their life cycle than any of the other insects that we've seen that we've talked about, either the stoneflies or the caddisflies. And here, mayflies break into three distinct or four distinct groups. We have this one in the middle, this large one, this is called a crawler. Uh, this is a classic uh, and famous western green drake. And they live in vegetation areas and eat the vegetation. We have clinging mayfly nymphs, which are designed to cling to rocks in very fast water. Uh, we have swimming mayfly nymphs. And those are represented by a fairly large family, and they're active swimmers. And we have mayflies that also live in, in, uh, in lakes besides just streams. But we have several different ones from sizes and colors represented here. The, where I mentioned the stonefly has a, an incomplete life cycle, so they grow up in their nymphal form and hatch directly out of their nymphal skin into a winged insect. The mayflies do the exact same thing. They have an incomplete life cycle. One of the interesting things about this green drake that we caught here today, this is an indicator uh, that I'd like to come back up here pretty soon with my green drake imitations. The wing cases on this mayfly nymph right here are turning real dark, almost black. That's usually an indication that whatever mayfly it happens to be, and in this case the green drake, that this one will be hatching into a winged insect quite soon. And as they approach time to hatch and their wing cases turn black, they become more active. They start moving around on the bottom of the stream or in the vegetation where they're living and they get washed off more frequently because they're more active just before they hatch. This makes them easier for the uh, trout to find because they're getting washed off by the current. Then they hatch into a winged insect and we have that, that form to imitate also. So when you find insects, mayflies, with these dark wing cases like this, it's time to start thinking about getting out your imitations for whatever type of insect mayfly that might be that, you are, uh, uh, that you're seeing. Like this little guy right here, this is gonna, when he hatches, this is gonna hatch into a mayfly that's probably a size 16 or an 18 if we were to imitate it with a, with a fly. This green drake will hatch into something that would be best imitated by a size 10 or a size 12 fly. Quite a large, quite a big difference in the two of these insects. Okay, after you've inspected the insects in a particular stream and made your choices of, for what you would like to fish with, it's best to take those insects and return them to the stream so that they can continue their life cycles. And uh, we just turn the net over and wash them off and they'll scurry down into the rocks in short order and continue with what they were doing before we interrupted them. I've just been successful in catching another type of mayfly and when we were talking about mayflies a little while ago I was mentioning that we have crawlers and clingers and swimmers. And this is one of the really common swimming mayflies that we find in lots of lakes and slow, um, slow weedy streams and it's called a calabatus. It does have a common name but it's most commonly called a calabatus. You can buy flies for calabatus and it's an active swimming nymph first time I saw these I thought they were little minnows. They swim so well. Another feature we can see about mayflies that stoneflies don't have is their gills. They're muscular and they can move them to help aerate themselves with... Come on now guys, let's get up here. So they can help oxygenate themselves. It gives them a wide latitude, but you can see what good swimmers these guys are. They just kind of zip around this little pan. I also mentioned with the green drake we looked at earlier that they have had dark wing pads. Well, you notice both of these in here have very dark wing pads right in here. This means that these guys are just about ready to hatch, probably in the next day or two after those wing pads turn dark. We can take a really good look at these, these swimming mayflies. Let me turn this one over. He's upside down. There we go. 
And this one's upside. Water's so shallow, they're upside down. Stay in here, guys. And you can get a really good look at how how active these mayflies are, and the fact that they have these movable gills. They have three tails, which is not not all mayflies have three tails. If this is this is going to hatch out, and this is a very distinct type of mayfly. There are not a lot of large swimming mayflies like this. So you find a mayfly that looks like this, has little dark bands on the tails, those big gills on the sides, and swim actively like this, you can pretty well guess that that's going to be a Calabatus mayfly. Now that hatches into a mayfly on most lakes. They're referred to as Calabatus. We buy Calabatus duns in, a, in the fly shop and they're a pale gray usually with an upright wing. When they come back to lay eggs, they have, uh, as a spent mayfly, they have speckled wings as, as well as the adult, as the first hatched ones do. And they're called speckled wing spinners. You can buy those in a shop. They do a very good job of imitating these. But another one of the types of mayflies that we're likely to see in slow weedy streams or lake situations. Very important to the trout angler. Okay, one of the other insects that we collected today was a green drake mayfly. This is one of the big and very well publicized and popular mayfly hatches of the western states. Uh, now, <clears throat> as, the, as the mayfly nymph that we collected today, uh, if we were going to imitate that with a nymph, we might pick a gold-ribbed hare's ear, quite large one. And we could put that, if we put that in the water, it gets pretty close to the same coloration. And one thing we talked about with the mayfly was that as they get close to hatching, their wing cases turn very dark. I've made a, put a dark peacock hurl wing case on this so it looks like an active mayfly that's just about to hatch. But this would be an excellent imitation for our green drake nymph if we're going to fish in an underwater form. And one thing I didn't mention, and it doesn't have just to do with mayflies, but any of the underwater aquatic insects, they make up uh, a trout, someplace between 60 and 80 percent of a trout's diet is underwater forms, insects as well as small bait fish and other things that may be underwater. So nymph fishing and learning to nymph fish can be a very, quite an advantage to you as an angler uh, at certain times during the, uh, and of course you want to switch to a dry fly when the when the fish start rising to dry flies. But there's our nymph imitation now. We haven't had an opportunity to catch a green drake adult to look at what one of those look like, but if I were to, it's a, just as it says it is, it is a green mayfly. Here's a green drake imitation. Approximately the right size, dark wings. And here's another imitation. It's also called a green drake. And it might make, either one of those might be a pretty good imitation of this mayfly after it hatches into a winged adult. These are both very interesting. They're closely related. They're the same genus, but different species of mayflies. We have, actually they're quite famous in, in fly fishing circles. These are western green drakes. Yeah, this one here is the classic western green drake. Its scientific name is Drunella grandis. The Western Green Drake, and it's a uh, it's a handsome, big, big, robust nymph. But this is part of the group of nymphs called crawlers, and these crawl through vegetation and are most, for the most part, vegetations. And we caught both of these insects nymphs in the same stream. This one is a crawler that lives in vegetation. So where there's vegetation, this Western Green Drake is found. Now this will hatch into a, a green quite bright green mayfly with yellow banding, probably something imitated by about a size 12 dry fly when it's hatched. As we're showing you uh, with some of the nymphs, they, uh, they can be imitated by about a size 10 hare's ear nymph as well. Now, this other one that's in here is a very close relative. This one is called Drunella dodsi, and it's a different configuration, but this one is designed, even though it's a crawler, it has an adaptation for life in fast water. And on this one's it's upside down. It has a very obvious kind of an oval ring on its abdomen. This is some modified hairs 
that are designed to help this mayfly cling to rocks in fast water, even though it's not a special, specifically a clinging mayfly. It uses that oval on its abdomen to help it cling to rocks in fast water. So in the fast water parts of this stream, we find this mayfly. This one also hatches into a western green drake. It's almost impossible without a magnify, magnifying glass and a book to uh, figure out, separate one from the other after they have hatched into an adult. So the same size 10 dry fly would work in either case. But it's unique in this circumstance and, and it's one of the things that I think is very interesting about mayflies is that we don't have to have a hundred different colors and sizes and shapes of mayflies. The mayflies break themselves into some interesting groups. We have probably 500 species of mayflies in North America, but by the time you get into a fisherman's fly box, we can break it into uh, maybe five or six colors and an assortment of sizes, and we can pretty much cover the majority of mayflies all across the country. The mayflies go through what's called an incomplete life cycle. Unlike the caddisflies that have a complete life cycle and go through stages like a butterfly, these guys don't. The incomplete life cycle, insects, and there are several, grow as a nymph underwater in many cases for a year, some cases more than that. Uh, and they hatch direct when they've grown as much as they're going to grow. They hatch directly out of the nymphal skin into a winged insect. We can see in a very close up view uh, a feature that's fairly important if you're going to go to the stream and do some collecting of your own. You can recognize uh, that a mayfly hatch is going to be underway either yet today or tomorrow morning by these real dark wing cases those on the mayfly nymph. They turn real dark just before the mayfly is going to emerge into its winged form. And so if you're going to be doing some sampling, you can, a little experience, you can go, oh, there's a big mayfly and those guys are ready to hatch. So we can get prepared for that type of a mayfly hatch. And depending on the time of day when you collect them, it might happen yet that same day or a following day. Okay. Here's another very common mayfly that we found all across the U.S. In a very prolific insect that's very important to the angler. This is a pale morning dun. And because that's kind of a long word, it's been shortened by anglers to PMD. Uh, they have a long hatch time during the, during the summer and individuals from this pale morning dun group will hatch uh, commonly in the morning. And they will hatch in many rivers uh, up to two months every morning. So they, you can see they become extremely important to the angler because they're there, the fish get to see them on a regular basis. These are small mayflies and are probably imitated best by a size 16 adult and the nymphs would be, could be imitated very nicely by uh, probably a size 16 or maybe a size 18 nymph as well. Now here we have another interesting stage of our mayfly and so we already mentioned that these mayflies as they, when they've completed their growth, they swim to the surface uh, and emerge from their nymphal skin into an adult. From the angler standpoint, uh, the emerger and the, this, this transition from a nymph to an emerger is very important. And the reason is, is because this is when the insect is at its most helpless. It can't really escape. And if you watch trout feeding on them, you'll realize the trout realize that as well. That insect can't escape. Uh, the process also of emerging from that nymphal skin is quite interesting. We have six legs, two antenna, a head, seven to nine body segments, two to three tails to extract from this nymphal skin. Sometimes that doesn't work very well and, and the insect doesn't get all those parts withdrawn from the nymphal skin. Now we have what we're calling a cripple or a captive dun mayfly that can't complete his hatching. This is also easy prey for the trout. Another stage that we imitate, and the trout are very, very conscious of this because this is something that can't fly away before they eat it. Now in this bottle I have two examples of the following, the next stages of our mayfly. 
we go from the emerger stage to the done stage. The done stage is characterized by um, an upright wing insect sitting on the, floating on the surface of the water, um, and the wings are a an opaque shade of gray. That's part. Of, that's why they're referred to as duns. As soon as they're capable of flying, they fly off to the underbrush along the stream, and they go through a transition, transformation. The mayfly is the only insect that anyone has found so far that has two adult stages. The dun, with its gray wings, when it hatches from the stream, is actually the subadult. And they fly to the sh shore in the shade of trees and bushes, and they go through another molt. And they shed their entire skin over their eyes, their wings, their antenna, their legs, their tails, everything, uh, and become the reproductive stage. And these are referred to as spinners. And the wing color changes. This is how the angler can tell the difference between the dun and the spinner. The dun wings are a gray, smoky gray color, opaque. The spinner wings are clear, crystal clear, and have no opaqueness to them. This separates the two. The mayfly, after it emerges from its the last molt, flies over the water, and they're referred to as spinners because the males get in groups over the water, and it appears when they're flying over the water that they're spinning. They kind of have an up and down uh, flying motion, and they use this to attract females. They mate, uh, the females lay eggs, and the process starts over again. The spinner form of the mayfly is unique and, and it's quite often overlooked uh, when the females lay eggs on the surface of the water uh, quite quickly after they've deposited their eggs they've used up all their energy and they die the wings those clear wings fall to the left and the right and we have the classic spent mayfly drifting on the surface again a stage where the mayfly cannot escape the trout because in this case it's, they've died